Iris, I'll get to your lines uh, on, on growth a little bit later on, but I wanted to first start talking about uh, the loan prime rate and what we're hearing in the liquidity injections that we heard from the PBOC here. Uh, when it comes to $100 billion injected into the system today, what do you think that's telling you from the central bank? Um, in fact, it is um, it's just as expected that the loan prime rates uh, are not cut. Um, I think that we have to have a very slow, really slow um, economic growth that the PBOC will cut the loan prime rate, which is very unlikely in 2021. Um, liquidity injection, as ex as explained by the PBOC, it is some seasonal factors like tax um, payments. So um, uh, apart from this, I'm expecting a broad-based triple outcomes of 0.5 percentage points this month. Um, if not, this month will be in this quarter because um, the uh, Evergrande re uh, event is actually hurting credit markets, and it could turn out to be a liquidity issue. So a triple outcomes is needed. It's needed, but will they do so? Um, you, you, some of your peers are starting to say it, it looks like that's fading, the prospects of this. J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs, after that PBOC press conference last week, and they seem to be surprisingly quite calm when it comes to containing the Evergrande a, a story. What, what makes you think they're going to have to do it this month? Um, there are a, a lot of things happening at the same time. The policy uh, actions on, um, on tech and on developers and on, um, for example, tuition centers. There are so many um, policy actions at the same time during a very short period. And this has a, a complicated results on the economy. We know that it's they, these are negative on economic growth, but how complicated is this? How complicated is the transmission as mechanism into the financial markets is still unknown. And to have a triple outcuts this month is a preemptive measure to ensure that those policies will not fit into the financial markets and turn into uh, uh, events in the financial market. If they don't do it this month, Iris, I just wonder, is the window for any kind of easing slowly closing now? At what point is it too late in that any kind of kind of supportive measures we get from authorities might not have the same effect that it had maybe a couple weeks or months ago? So if they don't do it this month, I expect that they would do it at least before the end of this year. Uh, if they don't do it anyway, then we should see a lot of frequent um, PBOC daily injection into the market to, to at least replace some of the injections mm. by a triple R cut. So either, either one uh, of the policy is, is, is okay, but a triple R cut will ensure that the market um, sentiment will not turn really bad. But uh, frequent OMO, open market operations, will not have this effect. And, and yet you're, you, you still have one of the most, I guess, optimistic growth forecasts uh, out there in the street, Iris. You still think 8.9% uh, for year-end growth for China. Why do you think that is? And wh what sort of growth are we going to have to see in the fourth quarter to get that kind of level? To have 8.9% for the overall of um, 2021, we need a 4.3% year-on-year growth in the fourth quarter, which is not really good. So, um, But what I expect is that when I get the 4.3%, I am expecting that sharp coal um, uh, limited supply will end and has and I believe that it has already ended after the the sharp uh, uh, shutdown on on electricity uh, generators um, in last month. So um, this will not come back in the winter. 
Um, and this is very important because not only for households, but also for factories. So um, this is something that I am very different from the rest of the market. All right. So in terms of the energy crisis, maybe that might might be a little bit better in the fourth quarter. What about when it comes to the property market? Um, we're, we're seeing these contracted sales and these property developers. They've been in the, on the decline. We're seeing month on month numbers for, for new home prices. Also, it's been pretty flat. How do you think this Evergrande story is going to play out? And how do you think PBOC is going to try to ring fence this? Um, the first thing is that some third tier and fourth tier cities already impose price floor. So the price cannot go further down. Um, it could um, make the buyer sentiments a little bit better. But uh, usually this kind of measures will imply a very skinny uh, transaction volume. So the main thing is still on the default risk on developers. And we are now seeing more and more medium-sized um, uh, developers default risk rising. I think that's not going to stop. That is continue because the government policy on deleveraging um, real estate developers is actually um, very rigid and very the the mind is very strong on this. So uh, we'll continue to see the, the uh, property developers um, going to face higher credit costs, and it makes them even more fragile in the market.